All right, welcome back, everybody, to Pod Venture 3, Episode 2 of Cruising for Coos, where if you listen to, and hopefully you listen to Episode 1, you probably already have bought a sub $2,000 vehicle, rebuilt and replaced the engine, put on a new suspension, maybe a roof rack, and any other sort of uh, customizable options uh, that you, you, know, you made, it, made it yours. So you probably, you're probably already there. Now we're getting <laughs> to the Coos part. Where we're sitting next, I got Jim to my right, Mm -hmm. and we're sitting next to V. Remy Warren, and we're going to talk about Coos Deer. So this is the Coos Deer part, and we're going to get, basically, we're going to tap into the mind of Remy and find out everything he knows about these tiny little cool deer that live in Arizona. We're in this quaint little dining room. They live other places, too, but we're going to Arizona. We're in this quaint little dining room, too, here in uh, Remy's hometown. Yeah. This isn't my home. I wouldn't have so many ornate clowns around. However, <laughs> reminds me of the scene of Joe Dirt when he walks in and finally meets his parents. And they're like, hey, want to buy a clown? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's our Airbnb. The, I yeah. noticed the plates. Actually, I didn't notice the clowns until you brought that up, but I've got some <laughs> straight away there. Very, uh, not to, we're going to give it five stars. It's a lovely place, just a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we actually convenient. We moved a fern. We're, so we could, we're between two ferns. We thought that would be just a nice just, touch. Yes. Ap- good. Apropos, I think is the word. Yes. I don't know if that's the word. Coos deer. Coos deer. Yeah. <laughs> Back to it. So, uh, Remy. Yeah. We've flown into maybe not, not your house or exactly where you live here, but we're in your neck of the woods. And, uh, Tell us about these things that we're going after. Because I've hunted them a little bit, but not a lot. I think you've hunted them quite a bit in Arizona. Yeah, I've I've hunted a lot of different areas in Arizona, a lot of different, a lot of different over different years, um, with a bow, with a rifle. Had a lot of experience with them, and they are addicting to hunt. They are very fun to hunt, and they can be very challenging to hunt. So, is have you have either of you bow hunted for them before? I've never I've never bow hunted for them. I've hunted them twice during the early rifle season. Okay. I have not hunted for them in either means. I haven't even been to Arizona before. Oh, wow. The only, here's what I remember, or one thing I remember about when I rifle hunted them. I said to myself, I don't know how anybody could ever kill one of these things with a bow. The, the difference is you're probably in like an October rifle season, maybe right. something like that. Yep. Mm-hmm. It, you're going to be going when? January? Yep. Yeah. In the rut. It's a different world. I mean, it's night and day difference. You see really? a lot of deer. Honestly, like it's a, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to shoot a good coos deer buck with a bow than in Arizona than with a rifle. Really? Yeah. That's hard for me to even no, fathom. because they're. Yeah. I mean, think about every deer that's rutting. You you see a lot of good deer. I mean, a lot of times too. You might the the only thing that makes it more difficult is when they happen to just decide to run and chase a doe. Okay. And you're like stalking in, and everything's perfect. And then he just gets up for no reason and chase a doe. But I've had many times where they just go and they lock down with a doe and you watch them and they sit there all day and you can just sneak right in. Huh. Um, I've also had them just cruising, being stupid and walking just like any other deer in rut when they just get a little crazy. Like, they're acting crazy. They're fighting hard. They're out a lot. You should see a lot of deer, and you should have a lot of action. Yeah, so, like, normally, and like I said, I've never even been to Arizona before, so I haven't hunted these things, but, you know, you watch the TV shows, the, the meat eaters of the world or other things like that, and you see people sitting on a glassing knob or on a hillside or whatever, mountainside, glassing forever. I mean, just glass, 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 glass. And oh, then yeah. when they finally spot one, they got to get set up for a shot and then, you know, hopefully execute the shot. But it... It sounds like, I mean, glassing is still, of course, going to be a component in all that, but it's, this is almost a little bit, I don't want to say more run and gun, but it seems like, yeah, I mean, describe it in comparison to what people see. I think the glassing is is still key because you got to know where the deer are. You got to, you got to get into a position where you can make a good play. Um, You know. Well, I guess I, I might have to take back what I said earlier. It's easier than a rifle hunt outside of the rut. <laughs> you know, you gotta, <laughs> there's like some rut tags down there that like, and when you have that tag, you're generally just looking for a, a big buck because they, they are down there. With the bow hunt, 
I generally take it as I'm going to see a lot of good deer because they're running. So you have your best chance at seeing good deer, but you're also going to see other deer that mm-hmm. aren't giants that if it was me and I had the bow in my hand, I'm going to be stalking them because I think for the most part, pretty much any coos deer is a, is a good deer. Um, it, it's primarily a glassing game. Okay. But then there's also a few other tactics that you can try too. I've called them in before. I've done a little bit of rattling really? and had them run in. Yeah, I mean they're still white tailed deer. The difference oh, yeah, between yeah. these white tails and and actually other white tails, I think, is when you're down there, you'll notice that you know with that tag that you'll have, you can hunt mule deer and coos deer, right? Either or. But the mule deer, I never hunt down there because they're in the bottoms. Okay. Like in the valleys and the coos deer are up on the mountains. Whereas like you go to Montana, I never hunt the white tails cause they're down in the bottoms and the mule deer are up in the mountains. It's so interesting it's a mountain that it's the game. reverse. Yeah, it's, it's the reverse. Oh. And that's why I love to chase coos deer. And I think a lot of other people do as well it's because they're a mountain white tail. Like they, there might be some down in the bottoms, but primarily you're going to be glassing the mountain. You know, the way that I would start hunting is I just find a good glassing knob where the sun's going to come up at my back and I can just see everything with the sun lighting it up first, first light. Okay. And then kind of do the opposite in the evening. Okay. Um, because you're going to be wanting to look at that mountain, pick out the spots where you can actually see something mm-hmm. and then just pick it apart. But I mean, think about a white tail. They, unlike a mule deer where it has like a permanent white butt, the coos deer is very gray. They're almost like a, they, their coats look like a digi camo pattern, almost grays and blacks. The ground is gray and black. They don't have a lot of, of markings. Their tails are down most of the time. So contrast yeah, is just not like, it's really hard to pick them out. Yeah. I know every time I've found one, like, you know, in, in uh, like in, even in 18 power binoculars, and I'm talking a deer that might even be 600 yards away, which is relative, like, it's not super far. Right. But I'm always like, Oh my God, I found one. Like, it's like you're staring into the binoculars and then all of a sudden you're like, there's a deer there. At least, yeah. at least for me, like, it's, yeah. and maybe I'm just not good at Normally, finding the little like things. A lot, but a lot of times you catch that, that tail just flicking. Ooh. And you're like, Ooh, Hey, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. or antlers. Yeah. But they're, when they're running, they like to run too. They, they'll chase does. They're moving a lot more. Like it's, whereas earlier in the season, they're moving very little. Right. And they're very like, a coos deer lives, from what I gather, from what I've seen, in a very small area. Okay. Like, I've actually seen a buck in an area and then kind of been hunting that area and found both his sheds kind of in the same place that I've seen the same deer. So, you're like, okay, this deer lives here all the time. Like, within That's wild. a few hundred yards of where you're watching it. Um, yeah, they have very small areas that they call home. So... Most of the year, you know, they aren't moving around a lot. They just don't have to. But during the rut, they're looking for does. So you find the does, you found the bucks in January, essentially. Okay. And you should see a lot more deer, a lot more action than you've pro- than you're probably used to. You could go to a place that you rifle hunt and maybe saw four deer in a week, and you'll probably see thirty deer in a day. Yeah. Like it's that, that mm-hmm. it's that different. That is like yeah. just such a wild contrast. Because you're, I mean, that's absolutely right. Like we saw. Or I personally saw, yeah, about four about four deer in a week. Yeah. Wow. You know? Yeah. Can you like set the scene for what so again, somebody who's never been there before, I'm picturing desert, probably everything's kind of that yellowy, orangey, clayy almost color. Mountains. I mean, I'm trying to figure out pretty rocky, you know. Are we gonna be probably on one mountainside and then it goes down to the bottom and comes back up on the other side and we're glassing the opposite side, you know, like how expansive is this? This is, these are all total noob questions. Yeah. And and then also with that, like how do the Southern units maybe differ from some of the Northern units that also have coos deer in them? Yeah. So I think there's like, there's three different. Because we're going to be in pretty South. We're going to be pretty South. So there's three different, what I would consider coos deer countries. Um, you go further north, and it's there's actually coos deer in like a more pine type country. Okay, um, I think around like unit twenty two or whatever, big pine forest, and there's some big bucks in there, but they're they're forest bucks. Like they live in the timber, j- just up on the mountains. Um, then you go into the more desert arid country. I call I like the Ocotillo type country. So an Ocotillo is like if you just stuck your fingers up like this everywhere and made them. 15, 20 feet long with spikes coming off everywhere. Oh, just like yeah, a bunch yeah. of sticks. Right. Kind of grow like 
dry willows. They're actually really green in the summer and spring, but uh, this time of year they should be just big sticks with spikes. Okay. Um, that stuff is more, the Ocotillo grows in drier stuff, and then I would say like more rocky, gray rock, um, real crumbly rock. I would say fairly steep type country a lot of times too, and then and then broken country. Um, and then you get into the third type of coos deer habitat, which would be the oak chaparral type, where it's like a lot of mesquite forests, a lot of oak trees, big grass, like almost something you'd mo- expect to see more in central California. Okay. If you're familiar with oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, rolling hills, and then some big mountains that are just full of oak, and then the bottoms will be, say, uh, I don't know, like big mesquite flats. Hmm. and then tall grass that might even be the size of some of these deer. Okay, there's, right. There's a lot of good deer in that oak country as well. Um, but all three of those types of country, I would say, hold deer. Um, you know, I would say if, if I was to pick my favorite to hunt, it'd be that Ocotillo type country. Um, a lot more cactus there, mm-hmm. but I like the Ocotillo because they think that they, they're hiding. It's almost like hunting a burn where you can actually see the ground Okay. As opposed to the oak country where you can't, you might be looking at, into some of that oak country and you'll see 10% of the ground and 90% of it is obscured. So you're just waiting for a deer to go into the 10% that you can see. Whereas yeah. the Ocotillo, you might, might be harder to pick them out when they do come out, but they're all, like you can see the ground a lot of places. There's a lot less places to hide. They're okay. a little bit more like almost yeah. like hiding in plain sight. Yeah. Maybe not in plain sight because... Yeah. Now, the flip side to that is if you're bow hunting... Man, that oak country, like, there's a lot to hide behind. Yeah. The, it's quiet or more quiet because it's grass, and you can kind of crawl through that tall grass. Just watch out for, like, the little uh, prickly pears and barrel cactuses in it. But you can, if you see a deer, I mean, there's been time where I've seen a doe come down, like, a hard trail. I just drop down in the grass, and here comes a buck right past her. Knock an arrow, another buck. All 20 yards away, here comes a big buck. Unfortunately, I didn't get a shot because the grass was too tall. You see antler tips. It was like this 100-inch 100, 100 coos deer buck, probably the best one I've ever had a, a close shot at. Draw back, stand up, and I just see antlers above, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, uh, 20 yards away. You're like, man, I, I was like, oh man, can I shoot through this grass? No, you can't. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> no, no, you no, can't. No, you cannot. Well, That's so interesting. I'm yeah. totally switching gears, but you brought it up. So you're talking about cactus and stalking. So do you wear or bring anything with you to like, I guess, protect your hands or your knees or things like that? Or you just, do you just end up, you know, a, a pin cushion? All right. Here's my go-tos. I go leather gloves for sure. Okay. Don't bring those like, just bring leather gloves. Noted. Yeah. Um, leather gloves are awesome. With, do you like pull it off with your release or like how do you um, yeah i normally that? take it off before i shoot if i'm going to but just like just doing stuff leather gloves are great okay um or those like mechanics wear gloves you know they've got the okay yep but leather gloves like just thick leather gloves are the best um because if you just brush up against something it's easy to pull the spines out of it and stuff you can see them and then they're pretty durable and, um then what else do i like just my boots for stocking i'll sometimes i'll sometimes like i mean i've stocked in that stuff barefoot a lot or even just with those uh five fingers shoe toe vibram things yeah okay use those a lot in the oak type country there's not that much cactus oh really yeah in the cactus in like the ocotillo type stuff it's pretty rocky that's probably the country you want to go a little more quiet but um God, you just play it by ear you know if you're walking barefoot though you're, you're gonna avoid stepping on that stuff for the most part. Yeah. And then... Um, my boot, So, like, my boots, for example, too, have, like, the mesh, you know, around, like, the tops a little yeah. bit. Is that something that's probably going to just get spiked right through? Probably. So, I get something that's yeah. a little bit more... You know what's going to get you is, like, um, the agave plants. So, the the ones that make the tequila, like, little... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Know, and they get, they're really sharp at the tip. And you'll... St- I've had... The, those will go right through the sole of your boot, for sure. Like Seriously? Like, boots. Yeah, yeah. You just got to watch where you step a little bit. Um, wow. Those ones are the worst for punk, like poking, poking you. You know, they're yuccas, or, but mostly the agaves. Like, you step on one of those, sometimes the ends are pretty long. Right. Like yeah. Right through your boot. Like, even good soled boots. I like to go with the leather boots. 
Um, it just depends where I'm at, though. You know, yeah. It's like bring like some Solomons, and I've hunted in those there too. So you can just do like, yeah. It's, it won't kill you. You, oh, man. <laughs> you know what's gonna <laughs> happen. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen is you mentioned all these things. Now Mark is gonna have the back of the Subaru loaded up. He's gonna have three, pairs seven of boots. pairs of boots, yeah. all different kinds. And that's just the boots. He's also gonna have no. multiple pairs of. I mean, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Here's here's the flip side to that. It doesn't really. I'd rather go light and fast. Actually, now thinking about it, because if you've got a real heavy pair of boots, you're loud. You know, when you're moving around, it's. I mean, it's not going to be like bad weather or anything, you know. Right. You just, you just use something like because you aren't going to walk through a patch of prickly pears anyway. So you're just going to be like <laughs> not intentional. Yeah, it's intention. a it's the kind of thing where yeah. you just you know well if I'm going to get spiked, regardless of what I'm wearing, I'm I'm going to get yeah. probably spiked. Exactly. So. The um the two best things you can take. I take like a Gerber multi tool. Oh sure, uh, yeah. Pulls pull stuff out with. That's awesome. And then number two, duct tape. And this is this is a Remy Warren secret cactus removal uh, system. So the worst for it's hard to get out, and the one that you're probably going to get most is the prickly pear, right? Because they you you look at them and they it's not like the so there's a lot of different we could talk about cactus species all day. There's like the choya, which is like the jumping cactus, and that's the jointed one. I hate and the so when it, jumping when cactus. you brush up against it, it goes into you and then it detaches so right. it like just hangs out and then it's got barbs that are um like a, a fish hook so and then those those kind of keep working in so it goes through your clothes and then you're like oh man and then those stick in you and then it's a solid ball of spikes which is kind of hard to get around and then you've got your like your prickly pear which is the one that looks like the palms of your hands with all the mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. the kind yeah, of yeah eat. yeah um those ones don't look as menacing because they've just got spikes mm-hmm. and then you're like oh yeah i'll avoid that but you'll inevitably brush up against those probably more than anything else and they have these little hair like uh spines that are not the white ones but the brown ones okay you'll like brush up against it and there'll be like a hundred of them in your hand oh neat yeah and you're like how do i get all these out duct tape just put the duct tape over it and rip it off the opposite direction like you're waxing yourself <laughs> and they come out so good man like i learned that in uh yeah eastern montana because i i sat on one once and i was like how am i gonna get all these out of my ass <laughs> duct tape you practically yeah. gave yourself a brazilian yeah thing. exactly i was like wow <laughs> so fresh and so clean <laughs> that's like that's pretty yeah Innovative. Though. You heard it here first. I, I'm sure there's other people that do it, but that's that's my noted that's my thing. Gorilla tape works pretty good. Yeah, we've got some of that. Short term pain to cure long term pain. Yeah, what and it the- goes. Yeah, that's that's the best way. You can. It's almost like I bet you if you even took like a lint roller, you get them out. <laughs> <laughs> cactus roller. Yeah. Somebody, some, some gas stations. Yeah, are gonna somebody's now probably going to come up with millions. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're uh, patent it. What do we have? Do we have the IP on that now, Jim? Or just well, I yeah. guess Remy does. But anyway, the cactus roller brought the to cactus you by Remy Roaring, brought yes. to you by Vortex Optics. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are the little fuzzy ones? Little they're fuzzy like, ones. They look kind of like a little mound. They're they like a little grow. barrel cactus, probably. Maybe that's. I think that's what I yeah. rolled through. I ate it the first time I hunted coos deer. I was going up. Here's one thing that I found. At least uh, every like. The, everything seems loose. Like it doesn't seem like it's loose, oh, yeah. but it is loose. Like all yeah. the rock. Like you try to Very take a step, loose. you're like, oh, that's solid. And then it goes out from underneath you. So anyway, I, I ate it and rolled down the mountain, skinned my elbow and rolled through a cactus and on my on my on my buttocks. Yeah. And my friend wouldn't help me out. No, I wouldn't either. <laughs> it was it was like more on the side. I don't I don't know. I don't know, Mark. Yeah. I guess all right, maybe I I'm you just should, gonna pull you guys off. Maybe I'm the, too good of a you friend. You should set up the ground rules now before yeah. you get yourselves into yeah, an uncomfortable it's like a, situation. It's like a cactus prenup. Okay, fine. Uh, just hunting, I, I, I don't partner, know what's. You know, here's my. Prenup. Will you? Can you give if, me the duct tape? <laughs> that's what I'll ask. Here's what's stranger to me is not that he wouldn't help you, but that you asked. <laughs> 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 I couldn't like. It was just like I couldn't reach it or see it, and it, it duct really, tape. It really hurt. <laughs> duct tape. It really, it was really hurt. Just duct tape that bad boy, Mark. And it was probably a barrel cactus. Those generally keep their spikes on the cactus, so that's just a stab and go. Well, that's what, a, that's what it go. was. But they, there yeah. definitely was a lot of them that kind of came out. Oh yeah, maybe at the top they've got a little, I don't know, a little fuzzy bit. 
<laughs> well, now I, f- so, now, now I feel like an ass. Now I feel like I'm a weirdo. No, it's, no, it's fine, okay. Mark. Mark, can you roll us through the glassing suite that we will be going out there with, the optics suite? Well, so I'm glad see, you brought that up because... See how that cross-references with what Remy's rolling with. Okay. Well, because I was going to ask Remy that exact same question. Yeah. I want to hear his answer first. Okay. You want me to write right, it down right. on a piece of paper, slide it across the table? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I, I am taking this much. <laughs> you're going up. I think we'll speak specifically to bow hunting. You're going to go bow hunt coos deer. What are you bringing for optics? Ooh. Um, bow hunting, I would bring um, probably a pair of 12 by 50s and with a uh, Mount, so, something that I could mount it to a tripod. And then I would probably bring um, uh, spotting scope, uh, 60 mil, 65 mil mm-hmm. objective. Yeah. I wouldn't go crazy big with it because, well, it depends where I'm hunting, you know. And then, you know, I would maybe have like a bigger piece of glass as like a truck optic if I had to go find a new spot. But most places I go, I hike in pretty far. I don't okay. want to have to carry a lot of weight. Like it might be a three, four mile hike just to even get to the mountain. So oh wow, I'm not I'm not going to be carrying too much. I know a lot of guys will be like overdo the optics too, but I'm just kind of like, there's a buck, found it, yeah, good enough. Now I'm going to go stock it. I think that's. I think that's I'm in a lot of. I I go for action. That's what. Well, you brought up like yeah. See, Mark, as I recall you saying when we asked about. Brittany came to us and said, hey, what optics are you guys going to need? I recall uh, Fury 10 by 42 range finding binoculars, Razor UHD 10 by 42s, the Razor UHD 12 by 50s, Razor UHD 18 by 56s, Viper, or sorry, Razor 65 millimeter spotting scope angled, Razor 85 millimeter spotting scope angled, Razor 11 to 33 by 50 angled. No, no, now you've <laughs> two now tripods, you're, now maybe you're, actually three tripods, four binocular, tripods. Yeah. Now you're being excessive. Ranger, uh, okay, I, Razor 4000. The, the 18s, though, I would maybe consider, like, if I was going with, if the two of you are hunting together, I would say one guy carries 18s, one guy carries a spotting scope for sure. Yeah. That's. So that's then, what I was, and then just the around then, the neck piece is twelves. Twelve, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a that's a really good setup, you know. Or maybe the guy that has the eighteens has tens, the other guy has twelves in the spotting scope. I mean, yeah, you, you can, can split it up pretty nice. Yeah, the thing is, is you can't stock anything if you can't find it. Spot and stock, you got to spot it first, and you aren't going to spot it without good optics. So most of your time might be figuring out where the deer are. Yeah. Once you get into the deer, you'll probably be into the deer. But there's a lot of country that probably doesn't have deer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and if it, if I was going into a new, like what I do, I've hunted, gosh darn, I've hunted, a, I don't know if I've hunted every unit available for the coos deer. Maybe. I don't know, pretty close to them. I just kind of would just go each unit and check it off the list, maybe a couple of days there, whatever, you know. I used to go down uh, when I was in college, my friend lived down there. I just go spend like the whole month of January just hunting coos deer and checking out different <laughs> spots. And that was before there was all the information on it. There was, I think, a, what was the book? A guy named Dwayne Adams, I think it was. I could be getting that okay. wrong. He had a coos deer book. Really good. Like, everything nice. that was in that book was 100% true. And I just would go through that book, and we would just check off spots based on that book. The first time we went, we'd just always be like, do you think we're doing this right? I don't know. What's Dwayne say? <laughs> like, we'd, have like, we'd have like this little mantra of like what Dwayne would do. <laughs> Cause like we both had read that book 500 times. And you know, when I like the first time we shot coos deer, I don't even think I knew anybody that knew what a coos deer was, you know, it was like, yeah, now, now a lot of people talk about it. It's cool. I don't know. I what would Dwayne, what would Dwayne do? Yeah. He would have been so proud of you guys. I know. What? I was, yeah, I, got, I wonder if he still sells that book. I'm, I wrote it down. If, I'm going to look yeah. that up. If you don't, if you don't have that book, you should buy that book. I hope that sells a lot of its books. I hope that I, yeah, that was Dwayne Adams. Yeah, yeah. I was. I don't remember the name of the book. I look. I actually tried looking for it tonight or last night because I was going to bring it to you guys. Um, because it'll probably like the spot you're going is probably like right on there. Like it actually has. Oh, this part and everything was pretty true. Oh, like, he, like so, would he oh, like he talk breaks, to? Yeah, units? he breaks down every unit. Oh no way! Yeah, wow, yeah. that is that's yeah. specific. And I was like intensive. It was, a, it was it's a really good book, you know, because now that was 
I mean, now you could probably get a lot of that unit information and all that online or whatever, but right. that was a seriously good resource. And I'm sure that like a lot of that hasn't changed. You know, they like certain spots in certain areas and he definitely knew what he was talking about. So I thought that was pretty solid info. That's where I, and then we were just like, okay, let's try that spot. Yeah. Well, we kind of got forced out of the first time we went down there, we got forced out of where we were hunting and it was really good. How did but, that happen? Uh, How do you get? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so it's, no, it's a long story. How much time you guys got? You guys <laughs> got a list of questions. How much, how much no, time uh, you got? By, plenty of time. It was, they called it, uh, we were like, there was just a ton of traffic troubles there. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. yeah. And they're like, we, these guys came rolling up in their, um, Border Patrol came rolling up and was like, lights on, hands out the window. We're like, ah, what's going on? They're like, what are you guys doing here? We're like, hunting. Like, don't you know you're in Wild Hog Canyon? <laughs> What's Wild Hog Canyon? <laughs> we're like, this is the most dangerous place on the border. They're like, yeah, this is like, and we're like, oh, okay. They're like, you guys are, you shouldn't be here. Like, this is too dangerous right now. And we're like, okay. And you're like, and, what the big coos do? Yeah, and we're seeing deer everywhere. It's so crazy. So then we go, we go, we're like, okay. Now we're kind of freaked out. So we're, we're going, okay. Because they were, they go, oh, do you guys have sidearms? My two friends had pistols and i was like oh, i just got fisticuffs i like, just got <laughs> brought him right here the guy's like you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I can't remember i was probably like 19 i can't remember and um so what happened after that so then we went to a new area and we're in the new area and we were like this sucks because we were stalking like three or four booners every day and then we went to a new area that saw no deer so like i bet those guys were just messing with us so yeah, then we stay, go, stay out of my so sweet then, deer yeah, spot. So then we go back. And they told us all these stories about like what to look out for and all this stuff. And then we go back. So we're like, okay, we sleep the next night. We're like, okay, the hunting sucks here. I think they were messing with us. Let's go back there. So we go back to Wild Hog Canyon. And then we all get separated. And they told us this thing about watch out for any horses because they carry more drugs on the mules. And they'll definitely kill you if you, you like all this stuff. So we're like, okay. So we we're all like, okay, we're going to do it different this time. We're all going to be together. You know, it's going to be good. And immediately we all start chasing bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and the story of the buck that walked through the, the tall grass, like okay. three bucks right past me, that was in Wild Hog Canyon. And then I'm like, okay. And I'm like, where did my friends go? And then all of a sudden in the canyon where I last saw them walk off, just automatic machine gun fire, just going crazy. Oh, Just like, like serious firefight. You're like, oh my and God, like, my and I'm like, friends are dead. I get, and now I'm like, oh, sh-. and then here comes a horse, like, right. And I was like, no. oh no, dude. And so I just start like run. I'm just get out of there. Just get out hot. And I'm like, we're meeting. I'm trying to radio them. Like nobody's. No, when you say no, here comes a horse, was it, was it manned? Yes. A okay. Manned horse. Okay. And All I'm right. like, I was like, I just picture yeah. like, they're like a sign. Like there's just these majestic beasts <laughs> no, 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 that go no, no, around. Right. Just like, if you see one, it's like, it, if you see some sort of. It had a mane of fire. Yeah. 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 yeah right. I think like a they, phoenix. I think because you can load more drugs on like a horse, you know? <laughs> and then, right. And then, yeah. So I'm like, and now I'm like hiding and I can tell that the guy on the horse is definitely looking for me, but I didn't see enough. You know, I just like. I'm here, I was on this ridge, and then now he's riding up this ridge for no reason. And I make it to the truck, come to find out the guy on the horse was actually just a rancher guy. So I was like, (laughs) okay. Because I ended up like glassing him up later, and he met up with this little kid. So I was like, okay, whew. And then we, yeah, then we gathered up our stuff and got out of there. And on the way out, we ran into some Border Patrol guys. And they're like, yeah, it got pretty crazy. <laughs> we are like, I bet it did. <laughs> that, was, that was definitely yeah. something I was hoping to talk about a little bit. Because when you're down there, you know, obviously everybody knows what can happen. Sort of. I, maybe not everybody knows specifically what can happen, but you know the dangers that you're potentially dealing with. And so there's there's got to be like, does it happen frequently when you're down there co- boat, like hunting for coos deer? where you get rolled up on by border patrol? Um yeah, because all, all like it on the southern units, yeah. Like every every spring that you go by has like um sensors on them and everything. There's yeah. Cuz we're basically going to be on the border. Yeah, I mean, they yeah, know where to it. they know where you're at at all times. 90% of the time they know whether you're like just a dude hunting or what. There's you'll see like satellite blimps and all kinds of stuff. It's really, like helicopters I'm, all the time. Yeah, yeah I, I can't think, wait for them to be like, who the hell are these guys out here in this 
stupid looking Subaru with a solar panel. We're well, probably going to look that like conspicuous. I, if I was Border Patrol, I would just shoot that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yep, yep. Bring it in the yeah, drone. Right. Shoot the tires out. Let's Bring in the check hellfire. It out. Yeah. I'm going to write yeah. that down too. Yeah. And should we maybe put like, uh, should maybe we should spray paint a big American flag on the side so they know it, you know, we're I friends. think that that's worse. <laughs> <laughs> no. maybe, just, maybe just in big like, like spray painted letters, we are the letter R are American yeah, citizens. Yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll hunting. They'll, they'll hunting. buy that. Um, I, yeah. No, I mean, you'll, you'll see them, like, cruising up and down the roads, the main roads. If you, like, walk into a spring or hang out around a spring, somebody will probably come check you out. Like, it's pretty crazy. There's a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts on yeah, the border. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. it. So, yeah, and so, like, I mean, like, so... Obviously, that's a pretty wild story that you had down there, right? Oh, yeah, and, you know, Wild Hog Canyon. And then, you know, strong Border Patrol presence. Like I said, lots lots of stuff going on down there. Probably some people you need to be worried about. Some people maybe be less worried about. Um, like camping. Like, would you camp? Would you not camp? How far away from the border would you be like, yeah, I'd, yeah. if you didn't feel safe camping right on the border, like, like is there like a buffer where you're like, could get away far enough that you're like would be more safe. I oh, mean, there's I no mean, no, I don't hard and fast, but I don't know. I've camped down there by myself. I've camped with friends. Like I, it's, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's there's people cro- like what I do is I leave like um like a big jug of water out and like some food out because I, most people that are crossing are like in pretty like. They just walked a long ways through the desert. What they want is food and water. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, if it's in your truck and they're like, they really need it. I mean, if it was They're going to get it. Like, if I was walking a long ways and and I need food and water, I'm going to die. I'm going to break a window to get to food and water. Right. But if it's just sitting out, sweet. You know what I mean? Right. Have you ever been, have you ever been, quote, taken up on that offer where you come out and it's like, oh, yeah. I run into a guy that was like, I'm pretty sure he was going to die. And I was like, here's some water, dude. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah. And there was, um, I had some friends that were, uh, down there the same time. They found a guy that was like, he was dying. And they're just like, he's just like, take me to border patrol. (laughs) Like, yeah. Yeah. It was like, he was tapping out. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Jeez. I mean, I I mean, you'll see people every day probably. And I'm not, like, particularly worried about, like, you know, people who are just, you know, crossing the cross and they want to get in the U.S., you know, I mean, you know, whatever your political views are on it, like, I'm just not yeah, super all that worried aside. about that guy, you know? Yeah. Um, no, but, you, yeah, nobody's worried about the guys, like, it's like the the one, the Border Patrol guys that were talking to us were like, you got to watch out for people with, like, large bundles on their backs because they're carrying drugs, like, right. big square things of drugs, like, just stay away from that. Okay. Yeah. And then, like, any caches of stuff, don't be like, ooh, what's this? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. like, like, just stay away leave. from it. Leave. <laughs> and then, yeah. And then the other one was, like, if it's just, like, a bunch of, like, some all men, no women, like, and then, like, what was he saying? Something where it's, like, they're trafficking people, you know, like, kids and no women or, like, oh my gosh. you know, like, something like that. He's like, you know, just stay away, call Border Patrol, whatever. Dude, that's so, yeah. I mean, it's it's those activities that I actually have a genuine concern of, like, I just don't want to run into the wrong people at the wrong time. Yeah. Is, it sounded like those guys asked you if you had a sidearm or something like that. Obviously, you're bow hunting, and then to be carrying a sidearm, and I don't know if there's kind of a legal gray area that maybe we don't even want to get into, but... Oh, no, they, in the regulations, it says you should carry a sidearm in these units. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. We call it, like, a red zone. Yeah. So in the red zone, you're like supposed to carry a sidearm. Because Mark and I were discussing that. If you want. And we were we were kind of like, eh, well, we might just end up doing it. I hadn't looked into it yeah. completely, but I can tell you what I was gonna do. Yeah. Right, right. I okay. no, I just bring my fists. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just run. <laughs> Two you're sidearms. Remy Warren were no, just kidding. Uh yeah. I mean that's yeah, so yeah, if you're going to be hunting. I mean, just like, I don't know, just don't do stupid stuff. So That's, I think, for the most part, people that are hunt like hundreds of people hunt down there every year. Very few incidences with anything crazy. You know what I mean? Right. Like maybe somebody might have their window broken out or something like that. But 
Mm. I don't know. Just like, I don't know. Just like, think about it. You're going to see people all the time. You're going to see like border patrol all the time too. You know, it's pretty like, there's a lot of activity down there. For sure. For sure. Yeah. If you've never been there, you're going to be like, this is complete. Like it's, it's not like, the Canadian border <laughs> you boys are from. <laughs> I keep, yeah, exactly. I keep thinking of it as this wild west, spaghetti western, nothing as far as the eye can see. You're out there, Lone Ranger style. But I also am now realizing that actually there's a lot of eyes and mm-hmm. oh, foot yeah. traffic all around. Yeah, you're going to see like, like if you're close, if you're hunting like the border units, you'll see blimps, you'll see helicopters, you'll see trucks, you'll see people, you'll see like, I think aren't there like tremor sensors? Yeah, um, well, or, and like heat, sen- like that's what I'm saying. At every water source, there's like a like a trip wire that's like a, it's a. I think it goes off your body heat, so it's like oh, ninety eight point no one degrees. Like ding, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> cameras and all kinds of crazy stuff. Maybe out there. they'll bu- maybe they'll bump some deer our way. Yeah, well, that's the other thing too. That's <laughs> like hunting around the border. It's like they see people all the time. You could probably just like a lot of the deer will just tuck down. Like right. If you're in an area where there's a lot of traffic, they just they they just lay there. Like most of the time you blow a deer out, it's you're gonna here's what's gonna happen. I guarantee you this is gonna happen at least once. You're gonna stalk into a deer and you're gonna be like, God, the, it was right here under this tree. And you're like, this deer, oh, he's gone. It's open. I can see everything. He's gone. And you walk over to that tree, and he's gonna jump up at your feet and run off like a thousand <laughs> miles an hour. And you're just, and you're gonna want to bash your head against a rock. <laughs> like that has happened to me so many times that it will never happen to me again. Because now I'll just I'll be like, nope, I'm just gonna sit here till dark. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> and that's why it's nice if you got two guys. Like most of the most of the time I've been down there, I've been hunting alone, and that's that makes it a lot more difficult because you don't have somebody to kind of like give you a flag sign. It's like, Hey man, hold your hat up above your head. If that deer runs off between now and the three miles it takes to get there. Yeah. Right. Okay. That is like, is so much better to do it that way to hunt in pairs. Yeah. Otherwise um, you're just kind of guessing. Yeah. Because that, and then the other thing too, is they could get up at any time. And that's the trouble is during the rut, when you're by yourself to make a good stock, you're going to have to lose them out of sight at some point. And then, they can just get up and decide to chase a doe or whatever because it's the rut. Man. Right. It's like they, it's kind of like spot and stock antelope hunting in some instances. Like you just, they just might be there all day or they might never stay still for 10 minutes for the whole day. Well, I can't even imagine trying to execute a stock on a deer that's three miles away by myself. I mean, when you take three f- steps down the hill, like every, like trying to relocate that deer in that open country where everything really looks quite similar. Oh yeah. I mean, that just seems like almost like an exercise in futility. I guess, I mean, you've done yeah, it before, I mean, but yeah, it, I are mean, just like picking landmarks. Oh or? yeah. Just picking landmarks. A lot of times. Well, I mean now I've so many apps that you can just drop a pin on it on Onyx and you're like, sweet. I'm just walking over there. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah. There super easy. Just get the offline maps. Now, uh, also, though, still, I still take a picture from my vantage so I can yep. kind of zoom back in later. Um, you know, with, uh, if you got a, you know, ra- I mean, you'll obviously have your range finders. Man, range where you're at. Like, oh, yeah. And then, um, you know, anywhere that I, if I can keep sight of it, what I'll do is I'll range two points, like one that I think I'll be able to see from there. Okay. And then, um, like, where I'm stalking to and the deer. And then sometimes, like, I'll just tie like a orange marker or whatever, where I was glassing from. Okay. So then as I come over the ridge, I can be like, ding, oh no, I'm 483 yards or, you know what I mean? 1500 yards. Uh, but I ranged it at 1700. So I know I got to go 200 yards up and. You know, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Like use that a lot. Interesting. Very cool. Can we talk about stalking? Because I hear people talk about stalking all the time. Stalking is not a style of hunting that I have personally done yet. Um, and, uh, the stories that I hear tend to go, okay, so we were glassing, they saw this buck pops out, you know, whatever is hanging out in this one spot. So we put the stock on it and then all of a sudden the story goes to like, so then I was there and then we were like getting ready to shoot the duck, the, the buck. And I was like, I always think to myself, what happened on the stock? You know, like, is the stock just sort of a hike over or is the stock 
three miles of army crawling? Is the stock, um, you know, like James Bond running between trees and then hiding and then running into another tree? You know, or like, I think it's how does all it, of those combined. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, every situation is different. Most of the time, like, let's say, let's say you've got like the perfect scenario. It's a bedded buck. And I mean, most of the time they're going to bed face, like that's the trouble is they, they're going to try to bed where it's most advantageous for them. But I'd say the times that stocks, yeah, jerks. yeah the <laughs> times that stocks most work out is when you're stalking from above. Okay. Um, so it just depends. Like there's stocks where a deer's on its feet. Yeah. I guess I was, I'll jump back and forth. There's stocks where a deer's on its feet. So like you just have to, and you go, ah, he's in a good spot. I have to get there now. Like, uh, a buck that I shot there, I shot it off of a cliff. That's the easiest way to kill a deer is when they're below a ledge okay. because they can't really look up. It's like that whole ledge is a tree stand essentially most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Even if the wind's like bad, it's probably going over the top of them. Um, and you get like you get a little more bang for your buck because they might be further away, but the horizontal distance is pretty dang close. Right, um, right. So you still have to execute like a, a – a shot with a long flight time, but using your like, you know, lower pins. Um, so like if that's a scenario, like, Oh man, there's a buck right below that cliff. And I'm like a mile away. I'm sprinting, like literally no just running to get into position before he, cause you're like, he's not going to be there very long. He's in a good spot. I will jog. Like huh. I, I do that a lot. Um, obviously a lot of it's going to be out of sight. Like you're going to, you know, you aren't going to be like sprinting at 300 yards. You know? <laughs> you're gonna be like what out of here? Um, but look at this mad yeah. person running. Yeah. yeah. Like on certainly he can't oh, be yeah. hunting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then as soon as you get close then you calm down and like, all right, creep up, peek over, you know, make sure down there somewhere that that's one scenario. Then there's the stock where it's like, all right, that deer's bed in and he's probably just going to be there all day. In that case, you know, you're going to you're gonna work around. You're going to, in the places where you can check on him, keep him in sight, you're going to do that. If you got a buddy to watch, sweet, have him watch. And then, you know, what I'll do is I'll get within that, mm, let's say, if I'm out of sight, maybe closer, 300-yard range. If I'm, like, if it's kind of dicey, whatever, you get into that maybe 500-yard range, might probably drop your pack. Um then I get to that 300 yard range. Do you I'd say do something like, to like make your pack easier to find? Drop a pin, probably. Yeah, you could drop a pin. All right, all right. Um, yeah, that's probably, yeah. Get some like marking tape and set it up in somewhere open. I don't know. Um, yeah, just drop a pin. You'll be solid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, or remember where you said it. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's generally what I Gosh, do. But <laughs> the 2019 hundred. Yeah. yeah, just drop a pin, you'll be fine. I know. Yeah. I don't, I still am like, uh, I think you just lose so much like awareness when you just trust that. Like I've hunted with so many guys that I'm like, you'd be a much better hunter if you just stopped looking at that all day long. <laughs> you know? Like you're like, you're going to be always lost because you're relying on that. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so I, I was always lost before. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, well, you're that is lost, true. Too. Your sense yeah. of direction. <laughs> I know. I, I've got like an uncanny sense of direction. Like it's just, it's, it scares me sometimes. Like last year we were, oh, we're yeah, we were um, out at hunting and the, my maps were all jacked up. Cause I guess I had my phone in like some setting where it wasn't, it was just showing me way off because the location setting was all oh, okay. awesome. Your phone gets in that setting. Yeah. Sometimes. You go in battery save mode and it changes your location setting. So I was like, it was showing us everyone's like, I'm like, this is just, this is bullshit. And I put it in my pocket and just turned my light off and just walked out. I was like, you guys just follow me and just walked out for three miles. No light navigating through the cliffs. And so I was like, yeah, sweet. Like, I just don't know how I do it, but it's just, it's weird. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, but you, I mean, you just, I've done it every day since I can remember. And then you start, and you start relying on it. You kind of almost lose that. You're like, man, I, I think if you trust it a little bit, kind of, well, then I've been with people too. They're like, I know I'm going the right way. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be wandering around here for a while. <laughs> the only thing guaranteed with me is like, if you say which way we sh should we go, just go the other way. Go the other way. <laughs> Except the one time that I was right. There was one time that I was right. Yeah. I don't remember. How that. did we get on this? What do we? What were we talking about? Dropping oh, dropping on the pack. We were making fun. Oh of yeah. Packs. So, drop dude, the, I'm petrified of dropping my pack. By the way, probably because oh, my sense of direction. Yeah, here's, I'm here's, here's, things. Yeah, here's I'm not, 
Yeah. What I always do, um, there's a couple things. Do we just going from stocking to just like pocket organization? But um, <laughs> a couple things I always keep in. I always have my lighter in my pocket because I use it to check the wind and it's just good to have. I always have my headlamp in my pocket as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because then it's like if you drop your pack, you can go find it uh, in the dark. If you don't have, like if you aren't trusting your pin to find your pack, you get like a, one of those little um, LED lights, you know, oh, yeah. and then just like um, turn it on when you leave. Yeah. You know, like a little, oh, sure. yeah. And then you just walk by, or even like, I I mean, I've used like glow sticks in the past, like, oh, man, like in foresty stuff, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it in this before you could drop pins on it, you know, <laughs> like put a little marking flag for the daytime and snap a glow stick for the nighttime, you know? Yep. yep. Yeah. They've got like little LED button lights or whatever you could use something like that right um yeah even just like an aluminum knock little knock you know just set it off um just in a spare knock or something i think it'll be good mark yeah. we'll hopefully be good so yeah. back to the stock so, say, so, so what happens when we start your pack. oh you drop maybe yeah you, you drop your back now we're at the point where we're making critical moves critical mo- okay so i mean now you're gonna be like now you gotta debate is my approach, is there a possibility to be in sight? Like, if you can see its eyes, it can see you. You don't want to be able to see its eyes. So you're going to constantly position yourself out of its line of sight. Now, that might mean it's an open hillside, but if you lay down, can it see you? Well, if not, then that's a good approach. So then you start crawling. Um, I never thought about the eyes. You know, yeah. So, like, a lot of times, too, if you know there's only one deer there, just get his head behind a tree or something like that. That's solid way. Like, just look for their eyes, look where their head's at. But also, if they're looking away, don't trust that they can't see you because they do have a, a large field of view where almost most animals can see fairly well behind them. Like, we see about 180 degrees. Ish, yeah. They see, yeah, like 300 degrees. Some, yeah, they got their some, eyes more yeah. on the side of their head. Yeah, so they can see a lot of movement behind them. Now, it's not they aren't going to read your t-shirt, but they're going to like <laughs> maybe see you dicking around with your arrows and stuff for sure. Um, so anytime that you can keep their eyes out of sight, that's what you do. Now that might mean that you got to crawl. Uh, one move that I like to do, I'll do like the set the bow crawl thing, but I also like to crab crawl where I've got the bow on my lap and I'm like scooting on my butt. Um, oh, that's yeah. pretty, that's a pretty fast way to move quiet way to move. Cause you can use your arms and your legs to place everything. And Are then, you moved? Like, would that be like a downhill or just any time? Any, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know if I've ever tried crab crawl. Yeah. You wouldn't crab crawl up. That's intense. Yeah. An uphill crab crawl. Well, maybe crawl. you just do it. Maybe you just do it with your arms no. going uphill instead well, of your yeah. legs going uphill. I guess I was picturing more of like a, like a controlled slide. Yeah. It's like perhaps. downhill, downhill. Yeah. Or flat ground or whatever, but mostly, mostly you're going to be stalking in from above because their bodies, it's natural for them to bed like looking downhill mm-hmm. with the wind at their back, and you'll probably be coming in downhill from the side. I'd say like eighty percent of the things you're going to get a shot at will be that that approach. Okay, gotcha. Um, you know, which that so that kind of like that's one thing. So that's where I want what or one thing I wanted to ask. Let me spit it out. Is like where are these deer? Where do they like to bed? Like, are there places where you can? like be more efficient with your glassing, like maybe mm. places that like, oh, maybe I don't need to necessarily ignore this type of terrain, but like, you know, spend like 80% of my time looking for this type of terrain feature or maybe like this, um, let's say if you're going to break a hill into thirds, like I know like in the bluff country of Wisconsin, um, deer like to bed on like on points, kind of like on the you know, the upper or like a third of the way down the hill, if you will, like facing out, kind of like how you're describing, like looking yeah. out oftentimes with the wind at their back. And this is a lot of stuff that I've learned from like watching like in fault and the hunting public guys, you know? Hunting. Yeah. But, um, I mean, is it the same? It's just open uh, country. Yeah, or? it's the same. Well, I mean, they're, they're more on the top third, not the bottom third. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Most mm-hmm. of the deer will be on the top third. And then, um, they're like, you know, if you broke it into thirds, they'd be like at the, at the bottom of bottom the top, of the top third. third. That's yeah, what I was correct. trying to say. Yeah, and then um, they'll probably, I mean, they might be on, it just depends. Like, they might be on those shaded south faces, it, you know, if it's hot out. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's open country, yeah, they'll probably bet on the south face. Um, if it's more of that oak stuff, then they'll be 
you know, just kind of under that oak tree. Mm -hmm. That's a good spot to look. But they'll probably be, a lot of times they just, you'll watch them walk into an oak thicket. And you're like, "Mm, okay, just got to wait for them to come out of that thing. Now, there are times where it's like, if it's a grassy hillside, you're like, this looks good. This is good country. And there's 10 oak trees on it. Mm -hmm. Stare underneath every oak tree, especially if it's the north face, for sure. Yeah. Like, you'll probably... Um, you'll probably catch them on the shaded side. Um, where else is good for bedding? I mean, yeah, I, most of the time, most of the deer you're going to spot are probably moving around. They they also like to bed near those, um, what is it, like a Palo Verde bush or the century plants as well mm-hmm. because it's it's one that kind of keeps its leaves and it's big and bushy and it casts a shadow as well. Okay. They'll bed up by those. But don't even be surprised during your rut. Like, they might just be bedded out in the open. It's winter time for them. They're like, oh, cool. I've seen them just bedded on, like, anywhere where there's a good good bedding area. You'll see little trails and stuff in the hard rock and little bedding area up against the rocks and stuff like that. They will bed amongst the rocks as well. Hmm. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, so how does that how does that change with, like, the time? So, like, let's say it's morning. It's going to be cooler. Are, are those deer likely to be on the faces that have a little, like where the sun is going to hit first and then they move? Um, or Yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, because you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, glassing with the sun at your back probably to start if you right. if possible. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, look on the ridges first because they're, I mean, that's like, it's the rut, you know, they can cruise ridges easier and they can pick up scent from wind coming on either direction. Like most yeah, it's yeah, it's just a good place to look first thing in the morning. Um, hmm. You know, and even a little bit later, once it starts heating up, those thermals are going to start rising. Mm-hmm. So you start pushing scent up, and those deer will travel those ridges because mm-hmm. they're they're going to get like doe scent from either side. Okay, you know? right. Because it's like most of the does will probably be just off the top, right? You know, and then those those bucks will just cruise those ridges a lot of times, and you'll you'll see them cruising like different spots too, but. Um, that top third of the mountain is always good. And then even, honestly, you could really find them anywhere this time of year. Um, you can find them in the in the bottoms as well, you know. Okay. In the bottoms of, like, the canyons and other stuff. But mostly, yeah, glass, glass the ridges first and then start picking up, like, in the face, like, in the head basins of things. They like that. They'll be, like, probably... If I'm thinking some Okatio country, there might be like this patch of trees. Mm-hmm. And like patches of trees are just doe hotbeds. You know, they okay. love that. They love that security of in the trees. They don't like to be seen. They like to, you know, they keep their babies in there for most of the year. It's like, I feel safe here. And the yeah. books are like, mm, ladies. <laughs> and they just chase them out of there like like it's going out of business. Like that. It's like a doe bar. Yeah, it's a doe bar. They're like, oh, hey. So yeah, you'll see some of that too. It's now, interesting. Like it's such it's such a drastically different type of country than you know where I've generally hunted whitetails. But like it's like all all the same rules like seem to apply. Like yeah. thick bedding cover. Like you know cruising ridge tops. You know or even downwind of a bedding area stuff oh, yeah. like that. Like it's just it's very interesting. Yeah, the um, there's still whitetails. You know, I think like there's probably a lot of dudes that would be way better coos deer hunters if they were just patient. I'm not that guy. Uh, okay. I mean, I've run into. Oh, okay. I've if run Remy's into. Remy's not patient. I know I'm not patient. Yeah, so like, I'm, I'm fine. I ran apparently. into like uh, some guy. I can't remember where. Just you know, out hunting, and I'm like, oh yeah, how's it going? He's like, yeah, good. He comes. He's like, I've been doing this since I was whatever. He's an older guy. He's like, I just go set up my tree stand in the river bottom, and I rattle, and grunt. And he's like, yeah, I shot this one last year. It's like, Booner. He's like, yeah, I shot this one the year before, Booner. And I was like, cool. And then I was like, man, I should go try that. And 45 minutes in, I was like, oh, peace out. <laughs> you <laughs> can have them, dude. very yeah. much like something I would I probably mean, I was just say. like, it's not impossible. Like, a ton of guys will, um, will in the summertime, get them on water. A ton of guys can just cruising, you know hot zones, especially in that oak country stuff. You mm-hmm. catch them in the river, but or in like the, I would call them like creek bottoms or whatever. Okay. Those wide fanned out creek bottoms. Okay. Those are better. They don't really like the, like there's two kinds because when it rains there, it just like washes all the water at once. It's like monsoons. Right. So a lot of the bottoms would be like 
slip and slides and mm. straight walls and you're like, uh, but you'll get these, these other valleys. It's kind of like a smooth Valley Oak in it. And then some ridges and stuff above. And there'll be plenty of deer in that too. Okay. And then you'll even get into like, even in the cactus country, you'll get into some like cottonwood type river bottoms. And I've seen, seen deer in that. So interesting. Yeah. Mark is very patient when it comes down. To, I, I will say that I can be, I can be patient, but then, I mean, I think everybody has their, has their limit, but like, that's what I was, and it sounds like you can get into scenarios like that where you can maybe find an area that deer are just using and then just set up shop and wait for one to come through. Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. Especially if you're like, oh, there's a lot of does hitting this water trough, whatever. There's going to be a buck there. You know, (laughs) it's like, yeah, it doesn't take rocket science you know it's like it's not that was one thing i was going to ask too because a lot of what i what you hear is the you glass it up then you go stalk it from a distance but i was wondering you know do you ever find yourself in a situation where the place you set up in the morning say is also the place that a deer is just going to trot right by i mean yeah it happens not that often though not Uh, that often no because normally i try to find spots where it's like there's so many spots out there because it'll be like flat and then the mountains start coming up. So you'll mm-hmm. find these little like knolls. You just go sit on it and you've got the best view and you're a ways away from oh, everything okay. else. You know, that's the best. And then if you aren't seeing much there, then go pick at one of the canyons. Like, oh, okay, I'm looking in that canyon and then start slowly working that canyon. I mean, it can happen. Like, yeah, they're definitely like deer moving. Right. You know, but you're probably going to. S- there's a lot of country that doesn't have deer in it for sure. So you're going to, you're going to see deer more than you're going to see deer kind of cruising by you, but I'm okay. al- I'd always be ready just in case. Right. Yeah. Well, and then, so speaking of water, like where you're in the desert, like not a ton of water, like are there places where you can, there's like likely to be water? Like where would you find water or like a oh, yeah. for yourself, if you possibly needed more water, or we're doing a multi-day trip. I don't know if that many people do, do that or not and then b just you know the deer need to drink too so where are they finding it oh well they they eat a lot of succulents so they get a lot of water from their food okay um huh. like in this time of year in the winter time mm-hmm. and then um they can uh there's water in a lot of those creek bottoms like okay. little seeps and stuff like that um you'll be surprised how much water you find can you filter it like is it oh yeah yeah i mean it's like yeah some of might be stagnant and have luck that strong arsenic taste, but <laughs> I just carry okay. a lot of water. I think I'll say probably it. try to carry yeah, water. Yeah. No, if I have a good I mean, arsenic reference. Yeah, don't, <laughs> uh, like around, there's a lot of, like around all the old copper mining stuff, I wouldn't drink that water. Okay. You'll see it. It's like, it's like the color of turquoise. <laughs> just avoid that, you know? <laughs> um, well, other it's stuff tropical. Probably eats it, but drinks <laughs> it, but yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's some like, there's a lot of old mines and stuff. You know, I, I don't know if I, you know, some of that, whatever, there's some water that I just avoid. You'll know when you see it, <laughs> just like this water that gets like this, it looks like oil on the top. And oh like yeah. Yeah. Green stuff that floats on the bottom and you're just like, eh. yeah. Yeah. All right. Just All carry right. enough water. Pass. Speaking uh, of things to avoid, going back to some hazards, Mark, you brought up some insects and things like scorpions spiders. Yeah, you definitely kind of have like a host of little other creepy critters. crawlies down there, you know, like you said, s- snakes, spiders, scorpions. Um do you have to actively try to avoid those things? Are there things you shouldn't do? You know, don't don't go peeking under rocks, don't don't oh. clear out a place to sit. I don't know. I mean, I would uh, uh the scorpions I uh always check your boots before you put them on in the morning. Like if you got them sitting outside on from the tent okay. I just like go under like, turn them upside down give them a little pat pat shake them out I always leave my boots set up right don't leave them tipped over because stuff will crawl in there okay. yeah, yeah you know and then you don't want to like the only time a scorpion is going to bug you is if you like s- smash it between something so like when you s- stick your foot in your boot right and then there's a scorpion in there and it's going to start stinging you um, so I just kind of <laughs> like I always do like the shake it out or store them upside down I guess is fine too um I'll probably keep them in the, if, if we decide yeah. to camp, which I think. Oh yeah, I, I think, think we're gonna. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. I think I'll just keep my boots in the tent. Yeah, we that's got fine, a super yeah. with a solar panel, man. We are set. Yeah, 
be out in the wilderness. <laughs> put them on, we'll put the boots on the solar panel. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean, you know, someone just stick your hand in there and feel <laughs> around a little bit light touching. Hello. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, but that, I don't think you have to worry about it. Otherwise, okay. nothing really crazy. No. I mean, just typical stuff to, yeah. Like, if you get out of the tent to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you might be, like, walking around. I kind of just use my light. I've I've actually stepped on a scorpion before. I was like, How's Ooh. that feel? Uh, it didn't sting me, so. I no know. kidding. Yeah. You were barefoot? Did you just yeah. feel, like, a little crunchy crunch? Or? Well, I, I, no, I was, like, I stepped on it, and I kind of immediately, because I, I was just, like, not paying attention, and then I was just like, ooh, hey, yeah, okay. <laughs> I actually <laughs> kept it and froze it and then bought a, <laughs> I bought a, it was pretty big. Um, and I bought a <laughs> just black light just like, cause it was cool. Like they, they glow underneath the black light, you know? So I really? went to the kitchen, unscrewed the light bulb. And then, yeah, I had this, I had this, it was like a, I had it forever. Well, I tried keeping it as a pet and then it died. And that's why I froze it. Cause I oh, was okay. like, so you captured after you stepped on it, you, you, you caught it. Yeah. In a Tupperware. Naturally. Yeah. Okay. And then I, and then I was like, Oh, I'll keep it as a pet. And then I don't know if it got too cold or what. And then, yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'll freeze it because I wanted to put it into an epoxy puck to keep as like a paperweight. Oh, right. I bought one of those as a yeah. kid in there. So I was like, okay, Spring I'll break. make a paperweight. Yeah. And then I never ended up making the paperweight, but I did buy the black light. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look at this, everyone. How cool is this? <laughs> you guys want to have a black light party? I got a scorpion <laughs> yeah. black light party. Exactly. <laughs> Do, uh, are they, um, what about food sources? Like, are, is there, are there certain things that they're eating, you know, that January time of year? Is something um, in season that's n- not before then? Nah, I'm trying to think. Like, I mean, they'll eat the grass, they'll browse a lot, they'll nibble on the um, prickly pear. I've seen them just, like, munching on cactus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've even seen them. I don't know if it's intentional or I don't, I cannot imagine how I was eating this, but it had like a choya and it's like face, like trying to like eat this. Dude, he had to just been like trying to get it out. Yeah. Like, there's <laughs> it no just way. looked like he was eating was like, it. Yeah. But I mean, you'll see him when you, if you, if you, when you shoot one, there'll be like cactus spines there. And I mean, the, the javelina, do you guys have javelina tags too? Yes. We do. I was hoping That's we were going to discuss these too. That you have to have that. That's bad. Okay. You gla- they eat the prickly pear. That's pretty much all they eat. Okay. And so you just, you glass up, you find the prickly pear, you'll find the havies. And they will have just spikes in their skulls everywhere. It's crazy. Really? Yeah, it's cool. But if you see the little fruits on the cactuses, I think everything likes to eat those. I mean, if you see some grab it and eat them, they're pretty good. Okay, off the uh, prickly pears? Yeah. yeah. Just It'll straight be, up? Just Yeah, like raw? take the spines off. Yeah, or okay. they're, they're This time of year, man, they're pro- it's not season for them, so they might be kind of like mushy. Um, okay. But yeah. I've eaten them this late. They're really good. Okay. Yeah, they're good. good awesome. Yeah, they taste really good. They're, they're like pink, and they'll be on top of the prickly pear. Other to cactuses know. have them too, but um, there shouldn't be any this time of year. But the prickly I'm, pear, there might be a few fruits left. Yeah. I'm pretty stoked about the the javelina too, because we didn't even discuss the fact that this is a bit, you know, of a, a, an opportunity hunt, if you will, because we'll be able to be hunting deer, but also another species as well in javelina. A, a little bit of a mixed bag, yeah. So, yeah, we've got the javelina tags, and that's you totally answered one of my questions. Is like, you know, what are they, you know, I mean, I guess obviously you can just glass them up, but that's awesome to hear that they're, like, keying on on the prickly pears. And for those yeah. who are not familiar, they're like a pig, like a, like a, 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 a small a, boar or something? A, a collared peccary, right? Yeah. What? I mean, they technically aren't pigs, but they look like pigs, yeah. What's a peccary? I think a peccary is a peccary, right? Yeah. It's like a, a pig like a giant rodent thing that's not is, a pig. Yeah. Oh, they're a giant rodent. Yeah. So like a small kangaroo. Is a kangaroo a peccary? No, it's a marsupial. <laughs> 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 but close. It's but, like, and the wombat it's like, is a marsupial. No, they're monitoring. They are marsupials. Wombat? Well, well maybe they're a marsupial too. They're an egg laying uh, mammal. How that's can what they be I both? that's what I remember about wombats. Wombats don't lay eggs. No, platypus, platypus does. So what's Maybe a, a wombat's just a marsupial. Platypus is, is an egg-laying mammal. I think there's two, though, right? Two uh, what? Two, egg-laying, two mammals. egg-laying mammals. Whales. Yes. <laughs> Dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Get your facts here, folks. Get them here. I've got nipples, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
What about call? Have you ever called Havelina? I've heard you can oh, call. Oh yeah, I've called Havelina. That's a lot of fun. You got to be like, um, it's like if you keep the get a Havelina call, and then or just like a yeah, just get a Havelina call, and then when you spook them, if you if you if you guys both go into a group of Havelinas, mm-hmm. sneak yeah. in there. You can either s- start by calling, or if you think oh it's a good setup, let's get one shot, and then we'll call. As soon as they run away, just wrench on it. They will come running right back to you. Really? Okay. Right to your feet. Yeah. It's like they, and they wolf, they, oh, 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 oh. they make this little noise and they just run in 100 miles an hour. So, like, as they and if come you don't in, shoot them, are they going to, like, trounce you? I mean, they might. I don't know. <laughs> nice. Like, uh, just, I've always like, shot them s- first. Stay, like, calm, you know, because I think what happens is, like, you get worked up into a frenzy and then you just draw back and you're like, ah, it's like <laughs> they're <laughs> running in from every direction. <laughs> just like, I've seen dudes just, like, unload a, an entire quiver of arrows. Legless, like, legless, legless. If you're, <laughs> if you're calling, like, as one's coming in, like, and then like slow it down like don't freak and then they'll be like huh stop okay and then shoot. yeah and then, and then as soon as they run <laughs> again like keep it going <laughs> because like you'll yeah it's pretty cool and if you wow. you have to be within i would say 100 yards or closer or otherwise they just so you can't like oh no kidding yeah okay. but a lot of times we'll like sneak in and then just do it just because it's fun they're okay. not very they can't see very well can they uh, not really no um their sense of their sense of smell yeah, is, is pretty really good, good. okay yeah. now i will say though once you use the call once on them it's not going to work again but it will work the first time like because we've hunted the same group before and we're like oh yeah that worked awesome man it just it worked like that and then the next day they're like no nope, not take, buying it yeah <laughs> might take a, and then like three days later they're like yep cool no kidding <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's fun you got to do that Okay, for I'm, sure. I'm putting that on the uh, to to buy supplies yeah. list. Or if you're like hiking through a thing and just run, one runs out, then they you just they'll come right back. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Or you just do is it. I've done it with it, my. Do they mouth. do that to like, fight? Uh, yeah. They. I. It's like a little one gets grabbed because they're all they live in these little pods. Okay, <laughs> little groups. So I think it's like. One got grabbed, like a, it's a javelina in distress. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. and then they're running in to like save it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it especially works if there's little ones. Okay, around, you know what? Do you know? Do well, I guess are they kind of like pigs that would just have like, I guess litters like year round. Like, could there always be babies? Babies. I'm not a hundred percent positive on that, but I think so. I'm gonna look I mean, that I've up. Always, I've always seen. Mm. Little ones with them. I'm gonna not make up a fact this time, and then look it up. We're hoping yeah. to. Uh, there are hoping. no baby javelinas. They all are just born full grown. <laughs> 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 yeah, me going there for a second. Yeah. <laughs> they um, do have the large. I've heard that they, have, and I think it is true. I think they have the largest canines of any North American animal. Okay, even larger than a grizzly bear. Oh. Yeah. That's significant. So if you get bit by it, it's probably going to hurt. And they're self-sharpening, too. The way that they lay up is like, sh- sh- so they sharpen themselves. It's pretty cool. Oh, good to know. They've got pretty sweet skulls. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That'd make a heck of a euro. Um, but yeah, we were hoping, too, that the, the eating's pretty good on them. I think they're really good. What do you think? Out in the yeah. field, too? Like, if you're eating oh, yeah. them out in the field? Yeah, what I do... Just um, steaks or something? Yeah, bring a pack of taco seasoning and then just build a fire, coat it with taco seasoning... Okay. Ro- roast it over the fire and then slice it up and put it in a uh, tortilla. Just like the whole oh, okay. thing? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just do like the whole back strap or whatever. Just yeah. do like taco seasoning. So you're fire. not even like, you're not like braising it or breaking it down or anything like that. Making You're just like yeah. eating straight meat over fire. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Taco seasoning, back strap. Yeah, tortilla. I like the sound of that. That's So that's what I wanted to ask too because, you know, hopefully we find some sort of success out there and, and get something. But... Um, it is the desert, right? Pretty mm-hmm. dry. So, but you've had fires out there, and I guess just as long as you're careful and mindful of it, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, you'll know where you can have a fire. You'll be like in this, like in the. I normally camp in the flats. Um, okay. Yeah, you'll. Yeah, there's plenty of places you'll be like. Yeah, I can definitely have a fire here. It's like 500 yards of dirt. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, probably not. Sweet. Spread anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. So I was talking to actually, and not not to name drop, but just like a, another guy I respect, uh, Ryan Lampers, and he's hunted coos deer, and he was talking about, because we we're talking about camping, and he was saying, don't camp on a ridge, and don't camp in like a, 
In a like a river bottom or a gully? Yeah. I, was, I just camp out in the flats. Okay. Yeah. Like, is that just most, for safety or is that to not be camping where the deer might be? I think it was to be camping where other people might come through. Yeah. Well, okay. you'll, you'll know where people, I mean, it's pretty apparent. Like people walk the gullies because it's easier and the ridges because it's easier. Okay. You know, but I mostly camp like, Unless I'm like backpacked in, then I just it, I don't care, you know. But okay. um, yeah, I mean, if I'm like if I've got my vehicle, most of the time you camp like off, right off the road, you know, okay. like somewhere. I mean, because wait, you aren't gonna like just boony bash your truck somewhere, or I don't know what you drive. It sounds like a well, sounds like a solar run Subaru. So. <laughs> it doesn't so, yeah, run you, on solar. We, we haven't we haven't we shown haven't them explained. the rig yet. We haven't explained <laughs> this yet. It's a f- 2004 Subaru Forester. So it's like my vehicle that I drive right now. That has been <laughs> lifted. That has been lifted. It put oh, on nice. some bigger, meatier tires. Oh, that that actually looks it's, a lot cooler it, than I was expecting. It's got a rebuilt engine. Oops. It's got a solar panel bolted to the hood that will power the lights and also uh, podcast equipment too. Nice. Yes. So we have a deep, uh, deep cycle battery in the in the rear that'll be running all that. So it'll be our. That's pretty cool. It'll be our little Kuzma. I would say, um, yeah, that looks like a drug running son of a gun. If I, ever <laughs> seen I did not think of that when we that put it together. Like, well, because we're not okay. Because uh, we're because we're not drug runners. We're from seriously, Wisconsin. when light like if if you're driving down a road and a light bar hits you, hands out the window. Noted, for sure. Okay. I have a feeling that is going to happen to us. <laughs> it is I 100% going to happen. <laughs> you guys look like Cheech and Chong's excellent <laughs> adventures. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> you cannot wait. What? And then all the questions that will ensue. What? what are you guys doing here? Why do you have a solar panel bolted to the hood? What's in the car? Why do you have so much stuff? Mark. Why does no. this sound like fun to you? That's my question. Mark, why do you have a duffel bag that looks like it could carry three bodies? And then Mark goes into, well, this is all my gear and all my clothing. Jim, yeah. you're like, you're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. I'm like, I think we need another vehicle. Mark, I have never <laughs> been to Arizona before. In my mind, if I saw this rolling around in Wisconsin, I'd say, hey, that guy I, likes off-roading. I need to find, <laughs> God, I need to find the vehicle that me and two buddies took our first coos deer hunt. It was, it was loaded down like we had a full-size target. We had, I don't even, <laughs> I think we had to strap one guy to the the roof. <laughs> it was pretty good. I've I've coos deer hunted in some I, I coos <laughs> I rented a car once. Okay. They were like off road vehicle. I was like, Yep, cool. Yeah. You know what I got? Like a a Dodge this is like red red Dodge caravan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's about no. seven inches off the ground. Oh jeez. And I'm like, mm, okay. Did you get the extra insurance? I did. <laughs> that thing got high centered no less than a hundred times. <laughs> I mean, just like it got high centered on the highway. And then the, oh yeah. And then I'm like, was part, I had it parked. I was checking out. I was like, okay, I'm trying a new spot. So if I go to a new spot, a lot of times I'll just drive and then park and then get out and glass and just like, see, like, just look for a place to go almost. You know, I was like, oh, I've never been here. This, like before you could, download cool maps on your phone. You know, just kind of like look at a paper map and then drive there kind of thing. Yeah. But I had this, <laughs> this was, uh, the rental car. I had my, uh, I think it was my Kaibab twenties. Okay. Oh yeah. On the tripod. And I got in the rental car and drove off, just drove right over the top of them. Mm. <laughs> I think I remember you, you called know, me. Just, I sent him happens. in. Yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. Does that warranty include cars driving over them? You're like, yeah. Does I was like cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's the address? <laughs> Everybody always acts like it's just it won't happen to them. Yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. I was I was pissed. Well, here's the thing: people don't think about is you drive over your optics that are fully warranted. You're like sweet. We also drove over a three hundred dollar tripod <laughs> that is not warranted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is that too. Yeah. Oh man! But it, I, what I'm gathering is it's good to have more than a minivan. So I'm yes. glad that we have a lifted yeah. Subaru. So our thought, our thought with this somehow we need to have. I mean, at least we know now if the light bar flashes in the face, hands out the window. But also somehow I feel like we need to just do something that just implies we're friendly to Border Patrol when they yeah. roll up on us. Like maybe. hey, you know, maybe we I have. I think we should like put the nice, archery target like on the roof rack. <laughs> maybe so we like, have like a nice. Yeah. It's uh, like hey, this is what we're doing. 
Oh, an archery yeah, target? Yeah, an archery that target looks like, looks perfect, like a bundle of drugs. The, yeah, the perfect, perfect storage. Oh, this, this giant <laughs> box of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need to have like a small, you know, keg of root beer or something. And then that way when they pull it, what are you guys doing? It's just, hey, guys, we just... We're just we out here drinking root beer, <laughs> making a mayonnaise commercial. <laughs> <laughs> we just let you guys get used to root beer. So, you know, why don't you... We're going to have to figure out something up. because we, we are going to... We're going to look We're gonna attract suspicious. Some We're going to attract some attention. Also, I'm kind of now regretting all of the interior panels that I've stripped. Oh, my God. And, and in order to run wiring for <laughs> all these lights. Oh, man. All the interior components, all the spare tire unit is now a 100% battery compartment, fuses, relays. It looks oh, like man. something out of Afghanistan. We're going to get... We're we're gonna be like those people that they, the people have to like free like the Innocence Project. <laughs> <laughs> they were oh, just trying wait. to hunt hey, deer. You know what? They, we don't call these pod ventures. We got to put the venture in in the pod venture. I'll give you uh, oh another tip. <sighs> yes. You do when you're driving down there, um, don't accidentally get in the line to go to Mexico. Oh, because there's, is that there's, like a, there's a lot of roads. Kind of easy to yeah, do on accident? Yeah, actually. I've I've actually almost done it. You're like on the road, and then it's just like, you're like, wait, oh, wait, I missed my thing. And they're like, oh, I had like backed out because I had pistols and everything. In the car. <laughs> and then I literally heard like two weeks after that had happened to me. It was like some dude did that, goes to turn around, had a shotgun, and then he went to jail. Oh. So just by, tur- just just by being in line and turning around. Well, no, I'm just saying like, because he was like, oh. He's like, ah, shit, I'm stuck in the the wrong road that goes into Mexico. And once you get past a certain place, it's like one way, you know, one oh way. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so he's like, oh, I'm just turning around. So like, okay, go ahead and turn around. And then he turns around. They're like, well, let's search your car. And he's like, I'm just turning around. And they're like, he's got like a shotgun in the <laughs> side seat. And they're like, you're going to jail on the Mexico oh, side. Oh, no. Yeah, Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Like on, the, on the U.S. side, it doesn't matter. It's when because he was like trying to turn around to go back into the U.S. Oh no! So do yeah. you still know this guy? No, I don't know that guy. I was read it in the newspaper. Oh yeah. okay. But I uh. read it in the newspaper because I was telling someone the story of like, dude, like I could see how somebody would get on the wrong road and then get in that line and be like, oh shoot. And then, like and you then, said, if you're in line and you can't yeah, get was, out. I mean, there's a lot of roads that you're like, you go and then you just turn right off along the border and then get back. You know what I mean? So it was like, I don't think that guy was, I don't know what that guy was doing, but I was like, man, that would have sucked. I didn't even think about that. Is it, then, is it, can you tell? Like, there's not, there's not like a gigantic sense that's like, welcome to Mexico. It's just sort of like, oh, I'm in Mexico. I don't know. There's like border checks. Yeah. Okay. So you have, you would have to go through that. At least, yes. Okay, but, but what still, I'm saying is, the pain. road splits off in some places, and it's a one way in. Oh, so you can't turn around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you get to a certain part you, ten miles out. You're you're just yeah. kinda, it's one way, <laughs> and there's no exit. <laughs> you're just kind of pot committed at yeah, that point. Yeah, exactly. You're like, wait a second. I think <laughs> like, I, I just, feel like there should be a road <laughs> where it goes the other direction. There's not. <laughs> I think I just put it in park and yeah. <laughs> well. Figure We're it out. Here. Yeah, <laughs> I guess the soup stays. That's right. Yeah. yeah, you guys can have it. Our thought with the, our thought with the soup was to have like a combination, like kind of like an ORV slash the daily driver down there well because it has to drive from wisconsin to arizona oh. we're not doing like we're not trailering it we're not flying you're in driving and, yeah we're mm-hmm. driving so it has mm-hmm. to it has to be road compliant but then once it gets there it has to be capable of getting us back a little ways and yeah. setting up a base camp so i think it'll be fine it should be wonderful how are the tires on it that's the oh they're knobby we got some yeah, general yeah. grabber at2s on that nice boy. throw in some uh you know like you got a pump yep and patches yep because yep. that one spare on the top, it'd be like nine spares later. Nine <laughs> spares later. We'll be using it. Yeah, I, I just, I, I patch How many spares pump. should we have? Should we have two spares? No, patch and pump. Patch and pump. Patch and pump. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Let's Stick talk. the old thing in the thing with the rubber patch yeah. and pump. You just kind of glossed over the, the solar panel there a little bit earlier, Jim, but I, I think I was chatting with Ryan, though, and you know how we have those portable batteries, you know, with the charger and the jump box and plug stuff in? Yeah, yeah. Could we have just plugged everything into that? Well, you could have, but then once it dies, it's dead. The solar panel. Fair enough. Sun rises every day, Mark. We are harnessing the power of the sun. That's right. That's right. Oh. I feel like there's so many more things that I want to ask and talk about. There's so anything many more else things. 
we haven't talked about, yeah. Remy? Yeah. Anything I mean, pertinent to bow hunting coos deer? Don't forget your bows. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. It'd Release be, it'd be pretty arrow far. bows. It'd be pretty far to forget. What about I don't shot even remember a, a release, at least. Shot distance is five, six hundred yards. Okay. It's pretty standard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have plenty of those shots. Okay. So, like, I don't know if you can make them. Very buy, few people can. Buy more pins. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know. I mean, just depends how sneaky you are. Well, I think most stuff probably gets shot at like thirty yards. Okay. Really? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Thirty to sixty. Okay. No. See, that's what I like to hear because thirty yards with my trad bow. Jim's oh, going. Yeah. Jim's going. El natural. He's going with the trad bow. See. Oh yeah. Then. Oh yeah. If you're in that oak country, man, you can get pretty close. Like I said, you'll get them at your feet sometimes. Okay. Like you, if you have someone, they do like to hunker down, and especially, it just depends on what phase of the rut you catch them at. You know. Yeah. If you like, you won't see as many if they're locked down with does, but if they are, they might just be that buck and one doe. Right. And they're just going to be like hide, like sitting in some little hidey hole somewhere. They're going to be hard to find, but they're easy to get close to then. Okay. Um, okay. You know, so it depends when in January you're going. Yeah. What day did we leave, Jim? Uh, the 10th of January. Yeah, that's what We'll get down there probably good. like 12th, 13th, yeah. yeah. I'm just excited to see one of these things. I've never seen one yeah. in real life in person that was like alive. Bring, I, I like, I mean, I, I bring calls. I don't think a lot of people call for coos deer but i do i like to call for everything i think it's fun i that's what i want yeah i mean are they pretty responsive they can be yeah, yeah. just depends on i mean it's like yeah, anything, just like right? anything. sometimes I you mean, grunt and sometimes they come yeah, in sometimes I mean, they don't elk are vocal animals but just because you blow a bugle doesn't mean he's gonna run in you right know? but i always have a call and i've if even like you know might be walking around there's gonna be a lot of deer that you're just you're going to be walking to somewhere and you're just gonna blow a deer out like probably a doe or whatever and it's gonna be close and you're gonna be like dang it, I wish we would have seen that. Like, it's open. How do we not see that? And he's like, ar, ar, grunt and lay down. I've had that happen on a buck before. And he's just like, hmm? oh, well, maybe that was a doe. Oh, okay. And I just, like, calmed down and, like, almost got a shot. You know, wow. too many oh. Ocotillos in the way. But just, like, he actually just bedded back down. You know? You ever tried decoys? I have, yeah. They were- um, seemed to, okay, but... It, when I did it, it was only I only had a a mule deer decoy at the time. Okay. Um, I just kind of used it. Just it was it got in the way a little bit. I think that it would work though if you had like some white tail like Montana decoys. Okay. I I've carried them around and I mean I've never had a real good situation to use it when I did have them. Um, the mule deer one I used to like I was like I I needed to cross over this thing and there's no other way to approach and i just used it to like cover some distance and the deer like kind of he saw it but i was like well i'll just try this Mm -hmm. and it it worked okay i mean it wasn't like i wasn't expecting any great success i wasn't like oh he's gonna see a mule deer decoy and come running in i just (laughs) right um but i i think that it would work i'm under the assumption that it will yeah i just didn't know if they're you see some of those like bow mounted ones you know heads up and i think there's like a couple other ones too and like you know, we're talking about like stocking. It's like, God, could you just could you just go right at them? You no. know, no, Mm-mm. no, that never works. You can try it; it won't work. <laughs> Good to know. Well, has someone told you it does work? Uh, besides no. the maker, <laughs> you no, know, just kidding. I, I have no clue. I, I take that back. I have no clue. But I mean, I've tried that kind of stuff before. It never works. Good to know. I mean, it, the only time maybe it would work is, like, if you're already in bow range and it's, like, kind of open and you need it to kind of conceal your draw and take a shot before they run off. Okay, but sure. I think half the time, man, just don't be seen. Draw when even... I mean, how many times have you been, like, hunting and something sees you and you, like, draw back and it stands up and stands there and looks at you just long enough to shoot it? Right. That happens. Like... Right. Yeah, you wonder if they're seeing, like, if it's the yeah. decoy that pulled it off or it's just, like, that split second where right. they're like, oh, what was that? And then yeah. you get the shot. I don't know. I mean, not that those don't work. I don't, I, but I wouldn't, like, I. what I was saying, don't try, is it sounds like you're just saying, like, pop up a decoy and just walk towards stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Me>. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you're like, I'm over here. Hey, deer, here you go. <laughs> 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 I don't know if I waste my time with that, but. 
you actually gotta find try just the right you gotta find <laughs> yeah. just the right, the right like scenario. Bully, bully from the simpsons uh deer oh yeah that's right. just kind of like like a rutted hey! up buck yeah okay i'll tell you this much like stuff happens you just don't know i gave a friend of mine who was antelope hunting one of those cow decoys right you know like a cattle and i was like here use this you know because the place they were hunting they're like oh it'd be good to cross some big wide opens so he pops it up, and this antelope buck that they're trying to kill that's like a half a mile away pops its head up, looks at that cow decoy, and runs to 15 yards. Okay. So, so we'll, stuff happens. You know what I mean? Happens. Like, you just don't know. So I say this, and then you're going to take that decoy out, pop it up. Just be like, I'm not even, I'm not, I'm just going to walk toward that deer. And you're just going to be like, okay, cool. And you're going to shoot it. And be like, ah, oh, you're so full of shit, Remy. <laughs> no, you didn't want to give away your secret walk toward the deer. That's <laughs> right. That's it was so obvious. It really is the thing. Just yeah. walk towards it. Well, forget Maybe the deer Maybe it does work. I'm, bring, I don't know. I'm, I'm bringing the cow decoy now. Yeah. There you go. Whew. Wrap it. We did good. I, I feel, I feel I like I know a lot good. more than I did I feel like an hour ago. I'm going in. Not so much afraid of the deer hunting, more afraid of what Border Patrol is going to think of us, but that's okay. We'll make it through. In and, the end. Yeah. yeah. Light bar, yeah. hands out the window. Got yeah. it. Um, yes. So with that said, I would say that next up, you and I have a little practicing of our bowsmanship. I think yes. that's a word. Is that a word? Bowmanship? It is oh, now. Oh, bowmanship. Okay, yes. So... We got to talk a little bit about that before we go. I know, you know, it's it's a little bit like so excited, but we still probably have to talk about that aspect of our of our game before we go. You got to practice. That's up next. All right. Remy, thanks, Tom, yeah. for joining Dave, us on this. Glad I could share some. A wealth of knowledge. Yeah. I'm excited to see how it goes for you guys. <laughs> I'm half tempted to go down there and just make sure that everything goes all right and try to shoot a buck myself. Yeah, but then I saw that vehicle and I was like, I don't want to end up in some border patrol prison. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear the automatic gunfire this time, you might want to come running for yeah, us. Exactly. See if we're all right. <laughs> Meet us down there. Bring your own truck. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for listening. As always, stay tuned for the rest of this pod venture. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks, Remy. That was yeah. cool, man. Yeah, dude. Thanks. <laughs> I hope that was good enough. Oh, oh that was, was that was most most excellent. Excuse you guys. You're gonna be like, it's not as easy as he says. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's not easy. I think she's a beaut. I think that's a great vehicle. Let me see that. Don't just say that. I don't want to go to jail. No, I mean you're definitely going to jail. But did you guys put a, <laughs> a suspension on it? Yeah, we did. By we, Jim did. It's lifted. It's lifted about three inches total. So yeah. She's nice. about. I'd say ground clearance wise, she's sitting somewhere around like twelve inches of ground clearance. That's perfect. Yeah. It's perfect for running drugs. Um. <laughs> be like so. What have you like, saw like, what the kind of people? Of it, like all the plastic covering compartments are like off right now. Yeah. Yeah. It. I didn't even. That's that's not a good look for us. <laughs> that's funny. I'll put them all back on. Then they'll <laughs> they're going to be like... Then they'll all have the witness marks yeah. on them that shows that somebody's exactly. been tampering with it. Oh, yeah, they're going to be like... Somebody's been tampering finger, with it. I just leave it all open. <laughs> just like, let's look inside. We were doing some work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to load bags of flour in there for you, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's That'll be great. Fun. Thanks a lot, Mark. No, you guys are going to have fun. That's cool. All right, that'll wrap it up for this episode of the Vortex Nation podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date on the latest happenings over here at the Vortex Nation podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Vortex Nation podcast. Again, everybody, thanks and happy hunting and shooting. We appreciate it. Have a good one.